Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. If you make future bass and your chords sound boring or they're super confusing to you, keep on watching because I'm gonna show you some tips on how to make them sound way more interesting. And if you keep watching till the end, I'll show you how to turn them into incredible and memorable progressions. On to tip number one. If you have a simple chord progression, something that looks like this sounds kind of thin. An easy layer you can add is the thick bass layer underneath. So to do that, you can just copy the bottom note and bring it down one octave. And that's instant thickness. That leads me to tip number two, though, spreading the voices. Now, as you see the chords here, you don't have to keep them tight like this. I've said it before, spreading voices can add so much to your chords. The same way that we've put this note onto the bottom as a bass line, you can do that to other notes of the chord itself. So in Ableton, you can just pick a chord and then go shift up or shift down to go up by an octave. If you're in FL, you do this with control. And you do that to any note. Let's try this one, bring it up. But before you go spreading your notes like... I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. Lumberjack? There's a technique called choral voicing. This one trick will make even the wimpiest super saws sound thick. No clickbait. And this is an amazing video that breaks it down. Of choral arranging is knowing how to create big and resonant chords. When spreading your chords voices, you want to keep the distance between the lower notes larger. So bigger gaps in these notes and then clustering them up throughout the top. So after a bit of voice spreading, I actually ended up adding a second bottom layer and then clustering the notes a little bit further. So this is the same progression with a little bit of adjustments. So I have the notes here so you can reference to what I changed. You can pause the screen here and just write it down for yourself. The idea is using choral voicing to assemble your chords. And this works because of the way that sound is perceived. Lower notes or lower octaves, having them spread more apart avoids the muddiness. And then higher voices tend to sound more powerful so you want to cluster them up so you have that strength. They can cluster together more safely because they don't overpower each other. So this is what that looks like and this is what it sounds like. So as you can see, I've clustered these two notes here and leaving a little bit of room for the top, but the bottoms are very, very spread out. Look at all that space. Look at all this more space. This could fit a whole choir in there. So many activities. And if you're looking at this, you're seeing a bunch of extra notes. Ash, why are you adding all these weird... To get that future bass sound, you have to be mindful not only of the voicing, but also what notes you choose to play. We're going to get into a bit of music theory behind these scores, so pay attention. If we go back to here, I'm going to assume you know how to make a chord. And we go back to our, you know, B major here, and it's that one three, five. I'm gonna show you how to spice these up. And if you've been on this channel, I've talked about this before, but that's adding the major seventh or major ninth to any chord. And it gives it that sad, happy sound. And then you can add that to the chord in any which way you want, keeping in mind choral voicing. So let's say you have the E note, keeping it clustered. So when I say seventh, I'm talking about the seventh note in the scale, not the amount of steps. I know it's confusing, but as long as you know what you're counting, you're good to go. So let's say we're in C major, our all white notes, no black keys from C to C. You're just that's the scale. So the seventh note in the scale right before right before that C is the B. So that's going to be your seventh. So if I was to play C major and add the seventh, you're going to get that sad, happy sound. So gorgeous. And then, of course, you can move that around. But if you're a true EDM producer, you don't need to memorize scales. Here's how you do it. We count what's called the half steps or semitones. We can count the half steps to get us to that seventh note, no matter what scale we're in. 
So that's every single key going all the way up, including the black ones. I know I said that C major is all white keys, but this is assuming you don't know the scale and you just want to get to any seventh, no matter what note you start on. That way you don't have to memorize what sharps or flats are in which scale. And memorizing the semitones actually helps if you're using Ableton, because anytime you transpose in Ableton, it's done through semitones. And the number is 11. 11 semitones and that'll get us to our seventh or the seventh note in the scale. So starting from our root note on C, if we try it here, C, counting every black and white key going up, starting here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that'll be our seventh. If we were to do it on this A sharp, aka B flat, B flat major, we do the same thing counting every note. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, would you look at that? That is our seventh. And this is why I added this note here as another note in the chord. And this is starting off what's called the root note, which would be the note that you put as your bass when you're doing the bass trick. And that same thing goes for the fifths, the thirds. So this all ties together. You're probably wondering, how do I turn these into... Tip number four is I call it each note a sound. Let's select all of this. This is the same chord progression and I don't normally color code it, but I thought I would color code it for you guys so you can see how I am assembling all of this. So to build on all these tips so far, you've heard of stack the layers, but maybe you're probably just taking that chord progression and just copy pasting it onto like five different super saws and stop doing no. that. Instead of doing that, assign a sound to each note of your chord that you just made. So for this example, I've got four different sounds. I actually only have one super saw. Who would have freaking thought make, making future bass, man only uses one super saw, absolute madman. This is the sounds I picked, one super saw. A choir. This square wave. Poop saw plus sub. The sub note and the poop saw are playing the same notes and a pluck. But I have four different layers and where do I get these notes? I've gotten them from this chord progression. Hey, look at that. I have all these chords selected and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll open this thing up and look at this. I've got it color coded as to which sounds go to which notes. So for the saw, I have it assigned to show the notes. The, the blue ones are all the saws. The yellow ones are all the choirs. So the, the choirs and the saws are actually copy pasted. Well, it's OK. At least they're different sounds. They're not overpowering each other. But as you can see, I have muted certain sections. And then I, I, I listen to it. I'm like, I want a bit more top end. So I add the square wave and those take up the red notes there. So only taking up the tops and then the pluck doing a similar thing, only taking up this kind of mid-range section. And then our bass notes are taken up by all the bass. It says B flat, but it's because the scale is on. It's also A sharp. And these are the octaves down. And I have switched up the rhythm just a bit to make the chord progression sound a bit more interesting, which, oh my gosh, that's tip number. You can change the rhythm of the chord or add automation to the movement. You can use Ableton's arpeggiator, set it to chord trigger mode, and then play around with the rate in order to get different rhythms. And if you're an FL, you have a similar feature built into the piano roll. You select your chord. There's a little wrench you can click here and choose chop. I think the shortcut is Alt C and this knob is the same as the rate here in arpeggiator. And oh my gosh, is that an FL tip? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are you, Ash? Whoa. Most new producers I find will keep everything exactly on beat, but they don't tend to change anything about it. You want to keep things interesting. I guess the best example I can give is in this poop saw. It's actually a combination of arpeggiator and the chord restarting, so it gives it a bit of movement. It gives out a more back and forth rather than just being straight up copy paste like that. It sounds a, a little bit more robotic when it's like this versus having the side chain do a dip for the rhythm and it restarting with the arpeggiator. So that's just a little subtle trick to give it a bit more movement. 
You've got to chop up the rhythm. You've got to make it a little bit more interesting. I've done that through these volume automations here, as well as a combination with how the side chain is working. Even layering it with more sustained chords in the background, like these squares, or contrasting it with a plucky something in the background just keeps it more interesting. You can use the LFO on Serum onto the volume like that, volume and filter just to give it movement. And this automation onto the LFO there, you can even change it as the chord ends to give it a bit more flair. You can have, wow, even more movement. As for the progressions themselves, Future Bass is a very groovy genre. It's not so much straightforward, it's more syncopated. That's the word of the day, AKA doesn't follow the beat every time. You can improve your progressions so much just by syncopating them. So you can start with your simple chord progression and rather than having a change on every four, I've actually half timed it so it spreads out over a long period of time and I have them matching up with the drums. Doing stuff like having one section where you have the same chord progression, but half timing it versus having another section where you might have similar chords, but having them change much faster instead. It's the idea of not just having this throughout the entire song. Because the worst thing you can do is have the same progression over and over for each section. You gotta spice it up a little. Do a double time on one, have the same chord progression and the drop, chop up the rhythm like this, and you can even mix and match the these different sections. Technically, this song is the same chord progression throughout the entire thing, but in each different section, I have changed the timing, I've sped it up, added a bass layer, added a lead layer. So it's not like I'm saying you have to come up with a different chord progression for each section. You can change it up by just messing up with the rhythm, like even just this section here. And if you combine all of these tips, you find more and more people crying over your beautiful future bass tracks. And one day you might even end up on stage with Porter Robinson and Elenium at Second Cry. I mean, Second Sky. But you're not going to get there unless you like this video and subscribe to my channel. But only if you learned something today. If you want to know how to write better, way stronger melodies, I've got this video up on the screen here. And of course, I want to shout out VIPs on Patreon. They've got access to a bunch of project files, including this feature base one. Thank you for watching. Now go make some bangers.